Well, hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Social Media Church Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Magnuson, and I'm really excited about our two guests joining us today. They're actually both going to be speaking at our first ever Social Media Church Conference. And to be honest, I just got connected with both of these individuals and i'm really excited about their story i actually was able to hop on their podcast just a few days ago and i'm really excited to introduce their voices and who they are to you as our community and just to get to know them before we hop into the conference we have a conference coming up it's our first ever conference compiling over 50 speakers of all the people who have been contributing to this digital church conversation for so many years since this podcast existed. It's going to be July 13th through the 15th. We're going to be covering three topics, creative strategy and platform specifics, one topic each day. All the information you need about this conference that's coming up is at socialmedia.church slash conference, but I don't want to wait any longer to introduce you to our two guests today. We have Jennifer joining us uh, today from Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. Uh, she is a part of Mount Hermon Baptist Church. She, Guys, she is actually on staff at a church in Pennsylvania. Uh, so this is as digital as it gets, and she is their media director. Uh, for Mount Hermon Baptist in Pennsylvania, and we're joined by her friend. And I want to make it clear, these two have never met in person, but because of an app called Clubhouse, they are joined together and creating all sorts of content. And so I'm just really excited to introduce you to DK, who is the campus, one of the campus pastors at Disciple Central Community Church, I believe in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and so Jennifer and DK, welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I'm so excited to introduce you guys. Hey, you should have hit the clap track. Clap for I us. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, insert that, team. If you can do that, insert the clap track there. No, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yes. Glad to be here, Aaron. It's party part two on this, so we're, we're ready to go. Hey, that's real. That's real. Party part two. Well, let's start with you, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, we got connected through our mutual friend, Greg Atkinson, and Greg was like, you have to have Jennifer speak at your conference. Jennifer, do you just kind of want to introduce yourself to our audience, your story, how, where you are, where you are, all the things you're working on, because you're not just working at a local church. Uh, you're doing really cool things for the kingdom. You just want to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Jennifer Benton, and I am the CEO and founder of Genetic Marketing Group, uh, which is my digital marketing firm. And I'm also the media director for Mount Hermon Baptist Church in uh, Philadelphia, PA. Uh, what up, Philly? So cool, fun fact about my church. It is located in the same neighborhood where Will Smith went to school in that what? famous story where he got beat up. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple of blocks over from that playground. And so wow. uh, him and my bishop went to school together. So that's the, the fun fact for uh, Mount Herman. Man, that's but, amazing. Has he ever visited the church? No. Bucket list. No, unfortunately. But that would be so cool if he came yes. back. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're right in that neighborhood. And uh, so, yeah, we're over there in the Overbrook section of Philly. And uh, just, you know, doing some innovative stuff. Uh, we are a small congregation, quote unquote, uh, with 100 members. And our team is even smaller. We operate with uh, three of us, one doing cameras, uh, the other one doing sound. And I'm Love remote it. every Sunday uh -huh. playing producer. And, wow. Uh, yeah. So my team, I literally coach them via text and FaceTime <laughs> every That's Sunday. That's incredible. I'm on my computer watching the live and saying, go here, do this, switch that. And we've been doing it for the past year and two months now. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Jennifer, I, I actually want to I just recognize one of the things I love about this podcast is because I have not always been the co-host of this podcast at my first week in ministry in 2013 coming out of college i was at a small church in oregon this was the first five years of my ministry we were a church of 300 we met in a middle school set up tear down every week didn't own our own building and i stumbled across this podcast and for the first five six like seven years of my ministry this was the podcast that walked me through and so it's just a great opportunity to let you all know as listeners 
uh, we're not just giving tips, tricks, and speaking to the churches with you know, thousands of tens of thousands of millions of dollars uh, to be able to execute on these strategies. We have churches, small churches of a hundred that are playing a huge role for the kingdom that are executing on these things. Uh, do you, so I, I don't, but I talk about it all the time. Uh, Jennifer, do you just want to uh, speak to maybe somebody who has a smaller church? Maybe they're the only person on staff and they're trying to figure this out. Do you just want to give them a word of encouragement? Sure, because I've been that too. Um, <laughs> when I came back from New Birth in Atlanta, and, and by the way, I spent three years there uh, wow. with their Emmy Award winning team, six Emmys they've wow. won over the years. And New Birth was actually one of the first Christian ministries to win an Emmy for a broadcast. Incredible. So trailblazers for sure. And I got to work with all of those producers uh, for the most part. And I just, I learned because of course, you have million dollar cameras there. You have the crane and all right. that stuff. And when I came back up north, um, I started serving at a church in Pittsburgh with one of my friends and it was a church plant and it was just me. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna make this happen? So started looking up some things. I took my iPhone. I got, um, you know, trial and error with the sound, figured out I to get an iRig and I made it happen. So wow. you would see me any given Sunday at Legacy with the phone on the mount, uh, a camera, I bought a DSL, uh, what was it, a Canon camera? Yes. Put that around my neck. <laughs> wow. I've got, I'm over in the sound, you know, tinkering over there and running around and taking photos. And so when we put things online from our live service to our video clips, to our photos and our promos, yep. people thought I had an entire team there. They didn't know it was just me. That's it. So having been that person, I can definitely tell you, it takes a lot of determination, definitely takes some energy. You got to be well rested because <laughs> Sundays yes. you're going to be running. But if you purpose yourself to do it and you have a plan and a strategy for what you yes. want to accomplish, you'll get it done. And then as people see you going, the beautiful part about uh, being a doer, when people see you doing, they want to yes. join in. That's it. So don't be afraid to get it started because trust and believe there were people that were coming saying, hey, this is dope. We don't have this at our church. I want to be part of what you're doing. That's so right. to this day, not to brag, but I'm still a legend in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, yes. <laughs> for that alone. <laughs> Hawk it. That's right. Man, well, DK, DK's itching uh, to get in here. Jennifer, thank you for sharing. I, I just can't wait to have this conversation, but we got to introduce DK. Now, DK and I got introduced uh, just two days ago when we recorded. Uh, Jennifer is our mutual contact, and I was just so inspired, DK, by um, just how you introduced yourself and all of the things you said you're interested in, and it's this blending of uh, worlds. So in everything that you do, DK, do you just want to introduce yourself uh, to our audience? Yo, what's up, world? I'm DK Hammonds. Uh, I'm the husband of one wife. I have four kids. Nice. And um, I am passionate about all things technology. I've actually been working in the technology space for about 16 years in real life, meaning hardware, software, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And then um, I'm also a practicing, a public theologian. I'm in school at Phillips Theological Seminary. So I like to operate in the intersects of those two worlds. Uh, and as Jen would call me the digital theologian. Um, yes. And I like to be able to bring and merge these two worlds together so that we can kind of forward and forge a new lane where we can implement uh, all things technology and all things theology to give God the glory. I think that's where, you know, I land, that's who I am. Uh, I'm a Laker fan. Yes. And I don't like anything <laughs> Dallas, nothing. So that's something you need to know. Nothing. Me. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm in LA, DK. I'm in LA and I'm well, a Blazer fan because we, coming from Oregon, we had one, really one professional sports team. And so we uh, hold hard to the Blazers. So we'll have to see how the playoffs go this year. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, rest in peace, Kobe, all that. Uh, but yeah, Laker. So you've always been a Laker fan. 100%. I was a Laker fan before Kobe, before LeBron. We're talking about Matt yep. Johnson, A.C. Green, Kurt Rambis, Michael Thompson. 
I'm that Laker fan. So I feel, you know, there you I, go. I will submit my prayers for you and your team. Definitely. Hey, well, it's all right. AC Green, soft spot in my heart. He, I uh, He's an Oregon State alumni. I went to Oregon State. Okay. Uh, so AC Green, uh, I'll cheer for AC. Uh, but yeah, one of our, you also know DK. And it, I don't know if you've met Jay Crandy yet. Jay Crandy used to, he's the online pastor at Saddleback, is one of the legendary co hosts of this podcast okay. and is a diehard Laker fan. He and Nils would always go at it because Nils is a Spurs fan. Oh, uh, he God. lives in New York, but spent a good amount of time in San Antonio. And so he's Spurs fan, uh, which is definitely the lowest rung on the totem pole of the teams that we've listed. But uh, yeah, DK, I just I'd love for you to take a moment uh, to dive a little bit deeper into that intersection of digital and theology. And this could probably be its own podcast all in itself. Uh, and I'm going to introduce you to another guy named Matt Curtis. He came on the podcast and was talking about like the theology of online church. And usually people's theology is what stops them from getting into the digital space with their ministry and so I am so fascinated that you are a digital first guru yeah. in this space you've done that in the secular space or in the space rather I like that that phrasing better yeah. but you're also incredibly passionate to, to where you're actually in school right now sure. uh, we got to keep this podcast at, at an appropriate length because you got a paper to write um, but talk to us about the intersection of those two things and maybe to a pastor uh, who is wrestling with what does online church even look like, and is that even okay? Yeah, so great question, man. I think a lot of pastors, especially with this pandemic that we've been in, um, they kind of got blindsided, and they had to shift their total focus into, okay, I need to be totally tech right now. And they knew nothing, yep. absolutely nothing about tech. And they had to outsource a lot of these things, outsource a lot of these people like Jen and myself to come in and help um, what they should have potentially been doing. Some of them can't do it because they don't have the money or the, or, or the time to do it. And so I've yep. been a person kind of sitting at that intersect um, where I can see these two worlds merging. And I'm, I've wor I'm working with churches currently. Uh, to help them kind of operate in the 21st century. And so yes. when you watch these videos and you watch these podcasts, um, they are high-end production but low-end theology. Uh, and so you, you have, you know, these uh, dope situations happening around you. And then you just so happen to look up and you see that we not in the Bible nowhere. We're all in ourselves. Wow. We're all about us. Uh, Jesus is not the centrality of our focus. Uh, and so now we're kind of like resetting. It's kind of like a digital revival that's happening in church uh, where we have to merge these two worlds together. And so for yes. me, digital th theology now looks like this online e-church kind of situation. But yeah. just because we have these things going on does not void us from being biblically and theologically sound. Amen. And so I want us to always be considerate that, yes, you need to have some dope production and production is important. Mm -hmm. But you also need a lot of Jesus, because if that does That's not right. come across on your screen, we are not coming to your church. It's very simple. That's right. Uh, you can have all the lights like Rihanna say, all of the lights. You can have all the lights. Yeah. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> yep. But when, but, but, what is going to capture my soul, right? What is going to capture the very ethos of my being? It is the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And so, when I turn on these lights, can I still see Jesus? When I Ooh. turn down theology, when I turn down technology, can I still see Jesus? And if we can't do that, y'all, we we have to recalibrate. And so, God has put me in a position uniquely to reimagine this space now uh, and kind of be a forerunner um, uh, of some yes. sort to be able to, to talk about the technology stuff that you need. And we're talking about, when I say That's technology, it. we're talking about software, hardware, stuff like that. And then to also yep. say, now what does Jesus say about the same thing? And being able, to, right. being able to be in that particular lane is a very thin cloud. And most people can't breathe. Totally. Anymore. Yeah. So that's about me. Thank and you. DK... Thank you for sharing that. Wow, you got me. I'm about ready to jump out of my seat. I, I, this is 
this is what, uh, and you've probably been saying this for a long time, and this is what people have been saying for a long time, and the pandemic has actually offered, offered us an opportunity uh, to let th- this message we've been talking about for quite some time land on fresh ears in a new way. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm actually glad you pivoted the question differently than I thought. A lot of people use theology to not do digital, but you talked about digital also uh, can stunt or water down our theology. And that, that, that cannot be the case. We cannot accept that. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, D- you know DK, for funny, sharing man. that. You know, um, you know what's funny with I'm, that, brother? Um, what's funny is the Bible talks about itching ears, and you think about yes. some of these some of these videos that we've seen. They're they're all about the tingling of our ears. They're all about yes. the capturing of one's imagination to shift the focus away from the very thing onto the said person when it should be shifting the focus yes. on the cross. And so you know, yeah, they, if we ain't doing that, brother, we gotta Amen. Really recalibrate. For real. No, nothing. Yeah, nothing. We're not doing anything. Well, I um. I want to you for you, both of you to share your story of meeting on Clubhouse because I'm really passionate about digital relationships not being something that's fake, uh, but digital relationships uh, as something that are very real. Even if we have not met in person, there's life transformation, there's uh, course altering that happens through people we meet online. Uh, Jennifer, I'll ju- I'll let you jump in and start. Do you want to just kind of let everybody know? how you and DK met and what you guys are doing together now? Yes, definitely. So um, I think I've, I encountered DK. We have a mutual friend. So if you guys notice, this is a theme, mutual friends. <laughs> That's it. For real. Yeah. So we have a mutual friend named Charity. In fact, she was the one that held the webinar last night. And um, she was holding a room uh, with Dr. Matthew Stevenson. And so I was in the room, I was in the audience, DK was on stage and he was one of the moderators, but technically he was like the stage bouncer. Um. Nice. (laughs) Let's dive into that. Let's dive into that for a sec because our audience is still becoming more familiar with Clubhouse. DK, explain to everybody what a stage bouncer is. Um, and she's right. So we were on Clubhouse, <laughs> and, my, and so we have roles and responsibilities on Clubhouse. Uh, Charity is normally the person that's going to moderate and kind of, you know, recalibrate the room. Uh, we had another person named Arisha. She would be in there and be kind of, you know, the second chair. And when I wasn't speaking, I would be the person kind of monitoring the room. And so it would yes. be my job yes. in particular that when people came up to the stage, you know, some people are just so passionate that they have to speak 25 minutes to, you know, show you their passion. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, hey, yeah. can you keep that into a box of about two minutes? And if you cannot yes. do two minutes, yes. I'm going to move you back down to the audience where you can just relax, sit back and enjoy the ride. And that that would be something <laughs> that I would actually say. Yes. Before yes. people came up, when it was time for question and answer, I would say, hey, guys, you know, I love you. Right. So, look, two minutes. And if you go above two minutes, I'm going to move you to the audience. And literally, you will see my stage. People are moving. People are coming up. Very interactive, yes. moving extremely yes. fast for Clubhouse. And then to that point, Matthew Stevenson turns around and say, whoever DK is. I need him everywhere I go because he's regulating everything in here to ensure that we have order. And so when you're when we're having guests, I want to make sure that my guests feel like this is a safe space to communicate. And I'm going to protect them no matter what the world has said around me. And so that's kind of where, you know. To Jen's point, where that came from, but continue, Jen. With your story. Jennifer, I want to know, Jennifer, did you have an interaction with DK? Did you try to go on stage and you had you had a little moment where DK told you to enjoy the ride, or, or how did this go? You know, I, think... I was I was scared. I was scared. Oh, okay. I, I sat in the audience, but I was texting Charity. I was like, "Yo, whoever DK is, I need to know him because this dude is cracking me up." I was loving it because yes. on Clubhouse, and, and for those of you that don't know what Clubhouse is, uh, we're we'll on that, by the way, at the conference, but it is the audio right. only app and you get to drop into rooms. It's almost kind of like, uh, they say audio bar hopping for lack of a better nice. term, but you get to drop into these rooms. You can spend about, you know, a second or two listening to what's going on. If it interests you, you can stay. 
If it doesn't, you can just leave quietly and head back on out and see what else is in the hallway. And so um, there's two divisions in the room. There's uh, followed by the speakers. So you kind of get like a VIP seat up in the front, so to speak. And then there's others yep. in the room. And typically, if you're in that followed by the speaker space, it's, it's a coveted space because depending on the speaker and their popularity, if you're followed by them, yes. other people in the room will follow you just for being in that section in the audience. Yes. So I was in that section and hey. I'm sitting there like, oh my God, like he is owning this stage with Dr. Matthew Stevenson and he's not even being afraid. Cause you know, people, especially when you're dealing with someone of Dr. Mac, uh, Dr. Stevenson's uh, magnitude, you get shy and you're like, oh my God, it's yep. Dr. Matthew Stevenson. But DK was yep. like, listen, you come up here, you got 1.5 minutes say your piece and and please <laughs> get off the stage or i'm just going to put you off the stage so i Let's was go. um i was in the process of building relationships on clubhouse and there was this guy named mario armstrong mario is a two-time emmy award winning uh show tv show host uh podcaster he does a lot of stuff and he was a resident uh, expert on the Today Show for several years. He's been on Steve Harvey, Rachel yeah. Ray, all those great people. And I knew, I said, okay, if DK can handle the room with Matthew Stevenson, he can definitely handle a room with Mario. And yep. so I didn't want to moderate it by myself. Um, and in Clubhouse, moderators, wow. they bring people up to the stage. They can uh, you know, pretty much administrate the entire room. So I said, I need to get DK on this. So then that way I'm free to host and then he's free to protect the stage and make sure that Mario is not being bombarded. Wow. And that's how we came together and we did our room with Clubhouse and uh, we actually taped it. Everything got jacked up on our uh, podcast. <laughs> so we were like, oh. oh, and then the Clubhouse room didn't go the way that we wanted it to go because Clubhouse was going through this major change. And so um, our audience was really small. And Mario was like, no, we got to do this again. But to this point, I knew that we had a connection and we had, you know, this brother sisterhood because when we interviewed yeah. Mario, we were talking about marketplace and uh, ministry things. And Mario is yes. not a church guy. He's in right. the secular realm. He has respect for church and all that stuff like that. But he's like, it's just not for me. He was so yep. impressed in this interview. He's like, whoa, wait a minute. I've never heard people adapt scripture to real life circumstances and situations wow. like you and DK. So to that point, he was willing to come back and retape with us and invited us to tape wow. with him at some point in time. And he's like, yo, Let's do another episode down the road, you know? And he's like, I want to promote Blacklight Digital on my platform because I think what you guys are doing is dope. So after that point, I said, DK, you stuck with me. <laughs> that's yeah, my and I, I, yep. think, I think that's it. I think that's the point, same, same, like, when you consider um, how black women are perceived in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry to take this shift there, but I think it's necessary. Uh, or how, no, women, no. how women are perceived. Um, yep. Most of the time, most women uh, don't want to connect with men because usually men are trying to have an alternative motive. I've never, you know, yep. approached gender in that way. It's always been, let's create, let's build, let's do yep. this. And more so, here's a good biblical piece. More so, let's build the kingdom and the community together. I don't have to have a picture or a name anywhere. This is about Black Like Digital, and this is about the community. That's what this is about. That's it. And so when you have that mindset, you can go to people like Mario and be like what Paul says. You know, I become all things so that I may win some. And so in winning Maybe. some, that does not mean I'm going to Bible beat you. That means I'm going right. to slowly put in scripture insights that you wouldn't necessarily think of. And they just automatically pop up at, at the perfect time. And so those things matter when we when we're handling guests. Those things matter in terms yes. of Black Light Digital community. And that's what we want to see, you know, going forward, um, helping people of color, no matter what color they are, um, move yes. into, you know, their God given talent. And that's what we're here to do. 
Yeah. That's right. And let's stay there for a second. And Jennifer, uh, I want you to speak to this um, <clears throat> because it's it's really your your baby. Or maybe maybe it's uh, bo- both you guys created it together. I, I'm under the impression at this point, so I'm going to learn something here too, audience. Uh, Jennifer, that you created Blacklight Digital. Mm-hmm. And the majority of our audience uh, would definitely be from the space that Nils and I are from and familiar with the voices that Nils and I have brought on here. And we are always trying to introduce new parts of the Christian world, new skin colors, new ideologies to our audience. Do you want to explain where black light digital came from the need for it? Uh, and just kind of educate, we're going to take a moment, educate our audience a little bit uh, about what the, the things that you're seeing and the needs and the gaps that are there. Definitely. So uh, the idea for Blacklight Digital actually came from um, a guy that I shared a roster with on Church Marketing University's conference. Uh, His name is Pastor Myron Williams, not Williams, Lord. Pastor Myron Pierce. I know too many Myrons, (laughs) y'all. He's out of Nebraska doing a great work out there. And uh, we were on the Church Marketing University conference and he listened to my session. Now, mind you, we also don't know one another, never met in person. And he emails me. He's like, sis, you're phenomenal. You need to lead a community. And I was thinking, like, I don't know. And he just kept pushing, like, no, nah, you've got to do it. And so um, he connected me to Greg. And uh, that's how I ended up on First Impressions as well. And I'm thinking this whole time, like, okay, well, what do we need? Because I'm not always aware of, like, how social media is for black churches. So, you know, coming from a mega church, we had it all, you know, we had the team, the photographers, we created our own stock libraries and things like that. And so I was spoiled at new birth. But then when I started thinking about, okay, I'm not there anymore. I've been in these smaller churches. Now I see, wow, there is a deficit. When I go on to the Christian stock photo sites, there's barely any black faces on there. Yep. You know, when I go on to uh, the video sites, there's barely any black videos on there that we can use yep. on our websites. So I really wanted to um, create a space where African-Americans, Hispanics, Asians, just people of color, period, yes. can come together. And um, of course, my bobby pin would come out of my head. But... <laughs> We're live, we're live. Okay, Uh, so I wanted to create a space uh, where we could come together and do these things. Now, the catalyst for this, because Myron started talking to me Mm -hmm. in about November, and I was dragging my feet. But sometimes what causes change is frustration and anger. You think about the civil rights movement, what happened? People got tired of being pushed around. They got tired of being, you know pushed to the back of the bus or, you know, beaten for drinking out of the wrong water fountain. And so here we are, 2021, February rolls around, is Black History Month. So I'm in this Facebook group uh, that's probably one of the largest social media groups on there for Christians. And an Asian lady who happens to be married to a black man made a post and said, hey, it's Black History Month. I would love to know what everyone's doing to commemorate this month. How are you educating yep. your congregations about the contribute contributions of black people in America? And there were quite a few Caucasian pastors that said, we don't need to do anything but worship God. Huh. We don't need to do anything but preach the gospel. This is causing division in the kingdom. God doesn't see color. And I wrote this very passionate comment. And part of that comment said, Mm. if God didn't see color, then why has he continuously made blacks, Asians, Hispanics, Indians, and and Caucasians? Like if Jesus covered it all, we should all be one tone, one race. (laughs) There should be no differences. Right. And, and And I ended it with this, that instead of seeing differences, we should see each race as a manifestation of the majesty of God. How glorious yes. is God that he can create all these different people. And then when you look at black people, we're not all the same. You know, you That's look right. at our Caucasian friends, they're not all the same. Y'all have blonde hair mm-hmm. and, and brown hair and red hair, you know, yep. and then our Hispanic friends, yep. they're not all the same. So right. 
obviously God has no problem with differences. That's right. It's probably the spice of life for him. Mm. Why are we so bound up? And why are we saying it's anti-kingdom to honor other races? And and I even spoke yep. up for, you know, the Latino History Month, Asian History mm -hmm. Month, Women's History Month. We should be celebrating those months in our churches right. and educating because there are contributions that were made that we don't even know about. Totally. Not just in the world, but in church. So that's right. I the Christian faith, the Christian movement. Own. That's it. Right. So I took a screenshot of my comment. I posted it as a post on my page. And mm -hmm. um, Kevin uh, Frederick's brother, if you guys know Kev on stage, his brother Jason from the Playmakers, he saw it. Mm -hmm. He reposted it on the Playmakers Entertainment page. It got 500 shares. <laughs> Blew up. And like literally a thousand comments of everybody like, yeah, Jen, go tell them. And uh, it just took off from there. So that day I did a clubhouse room uh, in the evening wow. parts. And it was probably about 100 people big just wanting to hear what this was about because wow. my room was titled why do evangelicals have an issue with black history month wow and so we talked about it and uh there was one brave brother that came up because we had an all-black panel didn't really mean yeah. to do that but uh, there was one brave brother that came up and he said listen i didn't know that racism existed in america like this until four years ago like you guys have been experiencing racism since you were like five and six years old. Like you have memories and you yep. guys were born in the eighties. Yep. yep. So those conversations became important. And when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I have to do black light digital because yep. my people and the people that are connected to my community and whatnot, they need support. And if, and if the ones that have created, cause there's a popular conference host that I'm not going to name. Yeah. Uh, who yep. unfriended me and blocked me <laughs> wow. because of my stance. And I'm so grateful for people like Katie Alred and Ryan Wakefield yep. and Greg Atkinson who saw that and they stood with me and they said, you know yep. what, you're our sister and we're not going to allow right. that to happen. And, and we sit by. Man. And also Tyler Smith at Texan Church too. He stood with me as well. And So um, good. So powerful. All of these people are speakers at our conference, by the way. They're all contributing yeah. to this first ever social media church conference. Uh, that's that's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a movement. So I'm excited. We started out with the podcast and we're getting ready to move into this community. Um, I already have a group of people that are chomping at the bits like, yo, Jen, I can't wait till you open this up. And uh, we will have a learning portal as well. Um, we have some Ooh. great people that are going to be teaching different aspects. I'll be sharing also on social media and, and different things. So just be on the lookout. Blacklight Digital is Ooh. definitely here and we're, we're growing. Thank you so much for educating us on that, Jennifer. That That is huge. I know I was enlightened to just uh, learn that, hear that side, see, because there's certain from the places and tables that I sit at, there's certain holes that I can see in the church. But that's why it takes all of us. Because uh, I can't see all of the holes and I don't have the glasses or the lenses to look at the world to see all the holes. Uh, and so we are definitely um, trying to take advantage of the digital age to blend all of these different perspectives together. We've never had an opportunity. The church has never had an opportunity to be led so well, so diversely uh, than what we do today because of what technology gives us. And so we're very passionate. Nils and I both, he doesn't, didn't have an opportunity to be here today, but Nils and I are both incredibly passionate about that. We're incredibly passionate about leveraging the tables that we've been given to sit at, uh, to invite these voices to, uh, and to use our stages to invite other people up on to speak, uh, cause we're well aware of the audiences, uh, that listen to us. Uh, and so we have an opportunity to introduce, uh, you listeners to voices like Jennifer and DK. But as we round this up here today, uh, DK, let's start with you. Uh, I'd love for you guys to both just touch on, hint at, you don't have to go deep into it, what you're going to be contributing to the conference this year just to get people, uh, they're already excited about you two uh, as individuals, but what topic are you guys going to be contributing to the uh, conference this year? I think I've vacillated between two, but I'm kind of mm. at the place of how can I help pastors leverage social audio for the next mm. millennial? 
many pastors Huge. are, you know, they they feel they feel like they got video down. But guess what? Social audio is a whole different ball game. That's and, it. And that good preacher voice that you like to put on with your hand over your ear, nobody wants to hear yes. that. Uh, we want to hear <laughs> you. We, you know, we want to hear authenticity. Yep. We want to hear what God is saying through you to us. And it doesn't require for you to take your mic and be, you know, slobbing all over it while you're talking. No, have a conversation <laughs> with me and yeah. let's, let's do life together. And so I think that's, that's the main, how can we do life via the social audio era wow. and having that conversation is going to be transformative in my opinion. Absolutely. Oh, I can't wait for that. I'm so excited for that. Don't slobber on your mic. Please. Stop slobbering on your mic. Please. <laughs> uh, Jennifer. That's a tweet right there, DK. But it's true. That's it. Like, I mean. Yeah, for real. You know, leaders, leaders come. You know, I, I'm going to give you an example. I, had a, I did an interview uh, with, a, with a elder statesman whom I respect. Uh, and I can mm -hmm. tell he never did social audio before. And he was approaching mm -hmm. it like he was going to Bible study. He had the voice. You could hear the pages turning while he was, you know, his mic was on. It was a clubhouse. Yeah. And I was just like, my guy, this is, you can't do that here. <laughs> you can't. And so being able to, to do relationships that way, I've, I've created a whole lot of relationships just in this magnitude. So teaching yep. people how to do that, it's going to be game changing. And I would, I would dare sure. say it's going to be uh, evangelistic. And so if we can have that 100 if we can have that conversation, we can start transforming like these small churches and they can really start hammering out content and information to go to the next one. Well, left, 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 That's left. it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jennifer, what about you? What are you uh, contributing this year? So I am talking about Clubhouse specifically. Uh, it is all the rave and the craze that's out there. And I'm just excited to get you guys introduced to that platform. I think that uh, to DK's point, you know, it's something that you have to have as part of your strategy. Because, you know, we can watch things, but to be honest, and I'm going to say it, so some of our churches are not exciting to look at. <laughs> right. But... The word is good. That's it. So why cut yourself short and have a poor presentation visually when you can just switch over to social audio and, and have that portion, you know, your Sunday mornings, and then come back during the week and let people know who you are. We're living in a generation where people want to know that their pastor has a personality. You know, They want to know that For you sure. have a favorite sports team. They want to know if you, yes. uh, you know, do you like to go do you like pizza? You know, are you an Android or iPhone? Thank you. Hey, that's right. Polynesian. Listen, <laughs> we have to always, always keep the Lord's chicken and the Lord's waffle fry in mind, okay? Listen, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's a different kind of theology that, that's a different theology you're going to get from dk as he comes around more you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> exactly. jennifer continue <laughs> so you know and that's why i love having dk on air with me because our personalities yeah. can come together and dk just throws stuff out there and i'll just ride the wave with him you know that's it and so my brother he keeps it light and um as and as I coined him the digital theologian, I did that Man. because he has the word, but then he was coming with Twitter spaces and this, that, and the other. And I was like, okay, Mr. Digital yeah. Theologian. And I said it as a joke, but it stuck. There, so, if, if people don't know, here's a, here's a free thing to your point. There's 26 audio. Free game. Yeah, 26 social audio apps coming out in the next five years. I'm already beta testing at least six right now. Let's go. Okay. And we, we, and Facebook is dropping probably next yeah. month sometime. And I've already gotten beta testing for that. Uh, so, nice. you know, you know, 
man, Aaron, somebody needs to... I think to... They, they already dropped it in Taiwan, didn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody needs to talk about what it means to be a beta tester in the social media world. And that's a conversation. Hey, DK, you've just you talking right now, you've earned yourself at least three more <laughs> interviews on this podcast. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah for like, sure, though. For yeah, sure. So, so those, things, theologian. those things are coming... Uh, now I've, you know, a lot of my friends are still doing clubhouse. I still do clubhouse sometimes. Um, I'm doing more so Twitter spaces just based on digital footprint yes. alone. And I know that they're not right. with, with the algorithm there more so they are, yep. you know, in clubhouse, but that's a different conversation. Go yep. to Jen's conversation and she'll be able to tell you more about that. Oh yeah, definitely. that's right. So, you know, we, I mean, like I said, with black light digital, we have all this different stuff coming around and we're talking about these new technologies because Yep. One of the things that Bishop Long left with us, and his birthday was just the other day, um, he was wow. about innovation and always advancing the kingdom. And the one question he left uh, in one of our leadership meetings that I still, I posted every now and then, he said, we must ask ourselves as church leaders, are we relevant? If the answer wow. is yes, and we see that we're still part of the community and people are still positively engaging with us, great. If the answer is no, then we have to pick up and do better. And so Bishop, yes. he was in his 60s. We were putting him on social media. He was with it like, hey, whatever, I don't know how to use it, but if you guys know how to yeah. use it, put me on there. That's right. And so I'll speak to the older pastors um, that might be listening to this. Don't feel like you have to learn Facebook and Instagram and whatever else. Yep. If you have someone in your church that's passionate about it, take that that's passion, right. let them grab their phone and put you on camera. You go yes. for what you know and let them do the rest. Preach. That's it. Mike. That's a great word to end with. Uh, and, and we want our audience to be able to say amen to you as well. So Jennifer DK, what best place to connect with you both, obviously clubhouse. And if our listeners have access to clubhouse, well, I think it's on Android now. So, so you might, uh, you still need to be invited though. So, uh, they can connect with you on clubhouse. Where else is a great place? If they just want to DM you, uh, shout you out, uh, connect with you. Where would you say DK go? Uh, I am DK Hammonds on all social media platforms. You can find me there. I am there DK go. Hammonds. All social media. Do you have a favorite? Right. right now, it's Twitter. You can find. I love me. Twitter. You can you can oh definitely gosh, find me on Twitter. Twitter if you want to. You know, hit me on my website. That's dkconsults.org. Uh, you can find me there. But you can definitely find me on Twitter. Uh, I have some crazy things going on there that I won't talk about. I'll talk about it offline. Uh, but definitely, there you go. I am DK Hammonds for sure. All right. Great. Uh, and all, again, all of these things will be in the show notes of this episode. So uh, look there, click on the links, connect in the best places. But Jennifer, where are you at? And I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Clubhouse. But Instagram is my favorite. Um, and yes. I'm Jen Janelle on there. Uh, so you can find me there. You can DM me and uh, reach out and say, hey, Jen, I need some advice or, or some help. And I will definitely fit you in on my schedule. And then also, too, my website is under construction, but we're going to be coming out with some great things there, too. So be on the lookout. And Blacklight Digital is on Clubhouse, too. So if you follow me on Clubhouse, Ooh. you can join my club as well. And she got some dope reels. Pay attention. Yes, I it's hit 55,000 views, y'all, on the last one. Wow. Let's go. And actually, I connected. Uh, if there's a theme of this uh, episode, it is... Get in people's DMs. There are mutual connections everywhere, uh, and you're missing opportunities. You have nothing to lose by sending somebody a DM. They might not get back to you. I can tell you the three of us will. Uh, most of, if not all of, the guests we bring onto this podcast are all about serving the church and serving it uh, through the DMs primarily. Um, but... Uh, I introduced you. This audience is familiar uh, with El Michelle. We just had her on a few episodes ago, but uh, her and Jennifer have such similar passions and I was able to connect them uh, yeah. in the DMS, but uh, yeah, she, uh, and, and so the reason I bring that up is El Michelle was very blown away also by the reels. Uh, and so <laughs> that is the first impression apparently that you're making uh, Jennifer on people is through your reels. So, 
keep up the great work there. Uh, any closing thoughts as we wrap up this episode? Anything else that you want to say in your last? What is it that you hold people to, DK? A minute, a minute thirty. We've gone way over a minute thirty. Uh, but in, anything in your last couple of seconds? <laughs> Yeah, I, I would say that as we travel together and do life together, don't be afraid to try new things because there's a new yep. audience that's on the other side of that. And so thank you, Aaron, for having me and Jen always. Uh, so I'll pitch it to Jim. Um, woo, I can say so much. I'll, I'll leave you guys with this tip. So if you're on Instagram and you're a ministry, you do want to get in on Reels. We were just talking about Reels. And of course, uh, they are the new feature that Instagram has put out. So whenever you're an early adapter to any of their new features, they will give you higher visibility. Completely organic. You don't have to pay for it. You just have your hashtags on there. Again, have your hashtags on there because <laughs> a lot of people don't like to use hashtags, but you need them in order to expand your reach. And so put your hashtags on there and be creative, you guys. If you have a drama team, I know a lot of our churches have been out of the building, but get someone on your drama team to act out something. So Even if they're yeah. they're acting out your sermon and the audio of your sermon is playing, wow. but you have one of the actors playing you and somebody else playing the congregation, it'll be funny, it'll be creative, and it'll draw people in and say, hey, wow, this church, they got really... Uh, you know, interesting content. I think I want to follow them. And when they come back open, I think I want to go and visit them. So don't be afraid to get out of your Man. comfort zone, but definitely use real. That's it for me. Jennifer, you earned yourself another uh, podcast interview as well, uh, if not so many more. That That's really good. Uh, and we do need to drill down on reels uh, as that continues to grow in popularity and people figure out how to strategize it. So many great things happening within the church right now. And we know that this is happening and that's why we're having these conversations and that's why we wanted to put together a conference with voices like Jennifer and DK because we know that you all as listeners are doing your ministry. You're in the trenches and you don't necessarily have the time needed to figure out how these platforms work and how you can adapt your ministry to them. And so we want to bring you those conversations through this podcast and we want to bring them to you in a more dense actionable way through our conference and we've attached a price tag we're not doing a free webinar and that's very intentional for nils and i because what we've seen and i know that jennifer and dk have seen this as well when you put a little bit of capital down you're more likely to act upon what you've heard and implement it and we know that with the 50 speakers we're bringing to this conference, if you act on what they say, your ministry is going to be amplified, the gospel is going to be spread, and more people who don't know Jesus are going to meet Jesus. And that is ultimately what we care about. So make sure you head to socialmedia.church slash conference. Register today. Claim your spot. We're so excited to have people like Jennifer and DK contributing to the conference. And... Until next time, everybody, this is the Social Media Church Podcast, and my name is Aaron Magnuson.